Conquering demons is what I do. Hello folks, Tso here. We are dedicating this video to Zhao, our new edgy hyper carry. He has one role to play and he does it incredibly well. He is also quite selfish, similar to Razor. To optimize his uptime, you will need to build a team around him to generate enough energy. This comprehensive guide will go over his abilities, how to optimize his damage during the 15 second burst, his recommended gear, and team comps. His normal attack string is a fancy looking set of attacks. The full combo is done with 6 button presses and results in 8 hits. His most damaging combo without considering his other abilities will be 2 normal attacks into a charge attack. You can get even more damage by cancelling the charge attack into a dash, but that will require a lot of stamina. With the proper team to feed him energy, you will almost never use his normal attacks besides finishing a final enemy after his burst is over. You can also footstool some enemies to get a plunge attack on even ground, but his plunge damage outside the burst isn't anything special. Taller characters like Diluc and Kaya will have an easier time doing footstools, so Xiao will struggle a bit here. Side note, Xiao does not take damage from plunge attacks. Speaking of plunge attacks, there is a reason why the ability has basic plunge damage as well as low and high plunge damage. When you directly hit an enemy with a plunge attack, you will get the basic plunge damage in addition to the normal high or low plunge damage you always get. Try to land on top of enemies if you can, but don't force it if aiming takes too much time. The damage from landing directly on top of an enemy is lower than the AoE splash damage. His elemental skill, Lemnist Static Wind Cycling, is a horizontal dash that can pierce through smaller enemies. It can also be used on the ground or in the air, and auto-targets the closest foe. At Constellation Zero, you can store up to two charges of the skill. When you hit an enemy, it will generate three enemy particles. If you use this skill during his burst, you will not generate any energy particles. Outside of combat, this can be used to gain some extra horizontal distance when gliding from one area to another. The main purpose of the skill is to generate energy for Zhao when his burst is not active. Ideally, when you start combat, you want both charges of the skill ready and his burst available. Then hit enemies real quick with two dashes and immediately start his burst. This will give you a head start on getting energy back for his burst by getting 6 particles. For Zhao, every little bit of energy helps. Why do you need so much energy? To activate his strongest ability, Bane of All Evil. This burst transforms him into a Yaksha, increasing his damage and range for all his attacks. It lasts for 15 seconds and drains a portion of your health every second. The health drain can be reduced by leveling up his talent, and the transformation ends when you swap characters. We also see Zhao does not skip leg day. He can jump super high while donning his mask, letting him easily do plunge attacks, which is the core of his damage. His plunge attacks during the burst can be split into two versions the quick low plunge that does less damage, and a slower high plunge with higher damage. However, you don't need to be at max height to get his high plunge damage. Around halfway to the peak height, it still counts as high plunge damage. You too can get the timing on the high plunge damage with enough practice. Also, you should be cancelling the plunge recovery animation with a normal attack. Against a group of enemies, you will want to do this normal attack into high plunge combo for the highest DPS. Against a single enemy, you will want to add a charge attack after the normal attack for maximum damage. I will show more details on optimizing his DPS in the next section. Putting together all his abilities, we can do some things to optimize his damage output. Since we don't want to cancel Zhao's burst, use your support's abilities such as Fisher's Oz or Xing Chou's burst before transforming with Zhao. Additionally, before using Zhao's burst, you want to expend all charges of your elemental skill. This will give him a nice head start on energy for the next burst. We don't want to use his E during his burst anyway, unless you happen to have a Constellation 6 Zhao. At 170% energy recharge, my Zhao is almost able to maintain full burst uptime with just him and Fischl. Once transformed, you want to keep doing the plunge attack. After landing, add one normal attack before jumping for the next plunge. This is the best combo against a group of enemies. If you are using Xingqiu or a C6 Fischl, 
this normal attack will proc their ability so you can get damage from Swirl. Another trick is chasing down smaller enemies. If they get knocked too far away, do a dash on the ground after the normal attack and jump to gain extra horizontal movement for the next plunge. This will bring you close enough to keep hitting enemies with the normal attack. You can also delay your plunge to get extra horizontal movement if you don't feel like adding the dash. Against a single enemy, you want to add a charge attack into your combo. Here is the damage difference using a charge attack. I am equipping weaker gear on Zhao to not kill the boss too fast in order to show you the damage difference on the combo with the extra charge attack. I know the charge attack has some AoE, but a group of enemies will be spread too far apart to still be hit by the charge attack. This combo is actually pretty easy to do. Each cycle only needs 3 button inputs. After using your burst, you want to jump and do a plunge attack. The first input is the jump, and the second is the normal attack button. Next, as you hit the ground, push and hold the attack button again. This will automatically do his first normal attack into a charge attack. Now you want to cancel the charge attack by jumping and repeat. Your three inputs each cycle is jump, attack, and attack again, but hold this second one to do the charge attack. This combo shouldn't be too hard to perform on mobile. For his talent, your priority is his burst, then normal attack, and lastly his elemental skill. Leveling his burst will increase the damage of all normal, charge, and plunging attacks, as well as decrease the health you lose. If you can get to talent level 7, then do it. This bumps the health drain down to 2% a second, which is the lowest it can go. His first ascension passive is also excellent. You will do more damage the longer you are in his Yaksha form. That's another reason to not swap to another character until his burst is done. You get the max damage bonus after 12 seconds. His Ascension 4 passive isn't that great. It just increases the damage of his E, but we don't really want to space it out to keep that damage boost. We want to use both his charges right before ulting to take advantage of the enamel particles. This passive is more important for Constellation 6, which is definitely not free-to-play friendly. Speaking of Constellations, hurrah for the free-to-plays! Half his constellations are pretty bad, so you don't need to worry about being much weaker compared to others. His constellation 1 adds 1 charge to his E, which sounds good on paper, but actually has minimal effect. This lets you get 1 extra E for the duration of any encounter. If the fight lasts 3 minutes, you still get 1 extra E over the entire 3 minutes. His constellation 2 can be decent to get his burst back, but can be compensated by building a correct team. I don't know why Mihoyo made this his constellation 4. I think it's the worst constellation amongst all the 5 stars in the game. His constellation 6 is unique, like the C6 of most other 5 star characters. It changes their playstyle a little bit. With C6, there is a DPS gain by using his E procs during his burst, so whales can be more stylish in combat. Now for his weapons. As a free to play, there's only 3 viable options. The strongest of the 3 is the Black Cliff Pole. It can be considered partially free to play since you can still get enough star glitter eventually. I usually don't recommend the weapons from the shop, but the craftable offensive polearms both adds physical damage, which Xiao does not utilize. The second best free to play weapon is the prototype star glitter. The energy recharge is still good on him, and the passive will let you get 16 to 32% bonus damage during most of his burst. This weapon synergizes great when using both his elemental skill charges right before casting his ultimate. The last free-to-play weapon is the 3-star White Tassel. The crit subset is beneficial for any carry, and you get a slight damage increase on the normal attacks you weave between each plunge. Crescent Pike and the other 3-star weapons don't fit with Xiao's kit, since most of his damage is enamel instead of physical. The weapons from the gotcha list are very strong on Xiao. Among the 5-stars, the best one for him is the thematically fitting Primordial Jade Wing Spear. The passive adds a ton of damage for Xiao, the next best polearm is the upcoming Staff of Homa. The crit damage subset is the best one for Zhao since he has natural crit rate. You also get a damage bump when below 50% health with this weapon. Vortex Vanquisher also adds a lot of damage, especially if you can get a shield before using his burst. It's still good without a shield, but the attack stat does not scale as well as the crit weapons. The Skyward Spine does the least damage among the 5 star weapons, but supplements that by providing more uptime on his burst with the energy recharge. The 4 star weapons are a little weaker than the 5 stars, but are still very effective. The best one is the Deathmatch from the Battle Pass. 
Its passive is great in every situation. The next weapon is the Black Cliff Pole from the Stargler Shop. This passive will outperform Deathmatch when you have all three stacks of the passive, but it's not dependable against bosses. The next 4 star weapon I recommend is a toss up between the Prototype Star Glitter and the Favonius Lance. The Prototype will provide more damage during Shao's burst, while the Favonius will get you more burst uptime. I don't recommend the Royal Spear. The Royal weapons are better if you have low crit rate, but Shao naturally increases his crit rate as he ascends, so it's not that good. Xiao's artifacts are very simple. You want 2-piece Venera with 2-piece Gladiator. Prioritize the Gladiator set since the 18% attack will benefit him more than the Anemo damage because he already has a lot of Anemo damage conversion from his burst. At the moment, I would not recommend any other sets than this one for endgame. Maybe that will change if MiHoYo adds an artifact set that increases plunge damage in the future. For stats, you want crit damage or crit rate for the helmet, Anemo damage on the goblet, and attack percentage on the timepiece. You should get crit damage over crit rate on the helmet because Xiao naturally gets 19% crit rate from his ascension, but still try to keep that 1 to 2 ratio between crit rate and crit damage. Energy recharge is important for Xiao too. Depending on the batteries on your team, you may want around 140% energy recharge to get his burst ready on cooldown. What are good batteries for Xiao? Well here's the recommended team comps to support him. Since Xiao loses health from his burst, you will need a healer. The best healer is Bennett since he provides an attack buff as well. Another good healer is Barbara. Alternate between her E and Q to keep Xiao alive. Her E will also help Xiao do extra swirl damage to nearby enemies. Also, equip the Tales of Dragon Slayer on her to get the extra 48% attack boost for Xiao. Jean is a healer that doubles as an Anemo battery, but does not provide a damage buff like the other two. Now we need an Anemo unit to be Xiao's battery. The best option is a C1 Sucrose with a Sacrificial Fragment. This can let her use her E 3 times to generate 12 Anemo particles. If you have neither her Constellation 1 nor a Sacrificial Fragment, then Venti or Jean will be better batteries. When using Venti, try not to overlap his burst with Xiao, since it can cause a DPS loss when Xiao cannot hit the floating enemies. If you don't have any of those Anemo characters, then Anemo MC will be your last bet. They are not the best choice, but it's a better battery than any other non-Anemo character. The last slot on your team will be a DPS support that does not need to be on the field. The best support is Zhongli since he provides both a shield and reduces nearby enemies' Anemo resistance by 20%. His burst also does a nice chunk of damage. Other notable DPS supports for Zhao are Fischl, Albedo, Xingqiu, and Ganyu. Beidou and Shangling can add nice damage with their burst, but they both cost 80 energy and can take a while to charge up. And that concludes my guide on Zhao. He is an extremely strong carry with the correct team to support him. His artifacts are also pretty easy to build, and he's not too hard to play to pump out his maximum DPS. For me, Zhao is now my strongest carry, easily beating out my C0 Razor. Maybe when I get Razor to C4, there will be more competition. Like, comment, and subscribe if these videos are helpful. It takes a bit of work to gather all the correct info for these character guides. Thanks for watching, and as always, have fun out there, Traveler.